Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, we're going to be making some weird sounding noise using oscillating waves. Let's start by creating one of those blocks. First, I'm going to actually change the rectangle mode and we can do that using the built-in function called rect mode. And the rect mode that I want to have is called radius. And this still requires us to provide four arguments into the rect function. But the first two are going to be the x and y coordinate of the center of the rectangle. And the third and the fourth are going to be half of the width and half of the size. So I'm also going to declare width and height. How about I set the width to be half of the width, w to be half of the width. And then height, I'm going to set it at 25. So now I want to draw this rectangle in the middle of the canvas. So width divided by two and height divided by two. And then let's provide width and height here. All right, so now we have this long rectangle. The next thing I want to do is I want to declare a margin because I don't want it to be as big as my canvas here. So how about we set the margin to be 20. And so now I'm going to set the width to be equals to width minus margin, right? But there are two margins, right? To the left and to the right. So it has to be two times the margin and then divided by two. Next, I want to draw a square. This square is going to be on top of this rectangle here, and it is going to move back and forth around a center point, which is the middle of the canvas here. And this motion, also known as an oscillating motion, specifically a simple harmonic motion, and it can be represented by a sine or a cosine function. So I'm going to define x as amplitude times cosine of angle. And we can use sine or cosine depending on where you want it to start. Cosine of angle and sine of angle is going to range between negative one and one. And we just multiply it by the amplitude, which this amplitude is what? Because we want to oscillate it from this point here to this point here. It is going to be the same as the width, right? So I'm actually going to change the name W here to amplitude. Same here. And then how about we start the angle at zero. All right, and then for y, it is going to be at the same point as i divided by two here, right? So there you go. And then we're just going to draw the rectangle at x and y. And for the size, we want it to be the same size as the height for both the width and the height because we want a square. So let's try that. Hmm? W is not defined. Okay, this has to be amplitude. Now we have a square, but this square is in the middle of the canvas. Even though cosine of zero equals to one and one times amplitude should be amplitude, right? So it, shouldn't it be here? But it is not there because actually this point here is not negative amplitude, right? Because everything is not relative to this middle point right here. If I were to multiply this by negative one. It is actually off the screen to the left here. So what we actually want to do is how about we translate the origin point to the middle of the canvas. So width divided by two and height divided by two. And then now we can put in zero comma zero. So now the middle point here is the new origin. And then this also has to be zero. And then now this should end up being right here to the right of the canvas. How will I put in no fill here? And I want to fill this one with the color white. And as you can see here, the middle point is at the end of this big rectangle, right? But because the size is bigger than the rectangle, this rectangle is a little bit off to the right, which is fine. We can change it later if we want to. All right, so how about we now map the angle to our mouse x location between zero and width and zero and two pi, right? One revolution. All right, and now, so when angle equals to zero, this box is to the right. And as I move my mouse, 
it goes to the left. Now my mouse is in the middle of the canvas. Now the X location is at negative amplitude. And as I move my mouse to the right at angle to pi, now the box is to the right. So that's one revolution one for one period, right? Okay, so basically we just need to increment the angle by a certain amount. Let's do 0 0.1. And if I delete this, now the box is moving back and forth. How about we do 0 0.01, so it's a little bit slower. All right, so that's half a period. And then that's a full period. But in that same amount of time, if we want to move it at more than one cycle, right? What we need to do is we can just multiply it by frequency, which I'm going to call, actually just do F. And frequency basically is the number of cycles per period. And what we saw just now was one period when the box goes from the right to the left and then comes back to the right. And we can define that as F equals to one, right? And then we get the same thing. But let's say that we want to move it a little bit faster. How about we want to move it at two cycles per period? We just put in two. And with the same amount of time, this box is actually moving two times. All right, so that's how the frequency comes into play into this equation. Now that we have the movement of this block, how about we create a class. So just come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, and then click create file. I'm going to call this file block.js. And before we start writing a class, go to index.html. We want to integrate this file into the program. So we want to copy and paste this line of code, change the name sketch to the name of your new file, and this is how we integrate it. All right, so let's go to block.js. Now we're ready to write a class. I'm going to call this class block and then inside the constructor function, what do we want to put there? So let's go back here. I actually want the amplitude, the height, the margin all to be global. So actually let's just put in angle. All right, so let's start angle at zero. And then this dot x is going to be the equation that we have here, right? Which is x equals to amplitude times cosine of angle times frequency. All right, and then we need this dot here, and then we need this dot for f as well. And then f is going to be a parameter in here, right? So next is going to be y. We need y as well, right? And how about we also set y as a parameter? All right, and then next, what we want is update. We want to update it, right? We want to move it. So we will want to, first, we want to update this x location all the time, right? So let's put that inside here again. Actually, this x here can start at 0, right? Because this angle will be equal to 0, and 0 times anything is 0. And then we update the x location here, and then we want to update the angle by a certain amount, 0 0.01. All right, so we have this part here. And then now we want to copy and paste this and put it inside a method called display. And we're going to draw, we don't need these anymore. We're going to draw the rectangle at amplitude and height, and then another square at this dot x and this dot y, right? Okay, and actually instead of calling it h, I'm actually going to change it to size. And it's going to be size divided by two actually, because I want the size to be the whole height and width of this square. 
All right, and by doing that, I need to change the size here, and then size here, and this has to be multiplied by two. We will change this eventually, but let's just keep it as is. Now let's create just one block. So let's call it B, and then B is going to be a new block object. And the arguments that we need is going to be just the frequency and Y. So how about I just put frequency as one and then let's do Y at zero, right? Because we already translate the origin here. And then now let's call the two method update and display. All right, so we should get the exact same thing. Great. So now, how about we create a bunch of these blocks? So I'm going to first change this to an array blocks, and I'm going to actually set a variable called num. Let's set num to 10. I want a total of 10 blocks, but then now the size will be determined based on the number of blocks that we have. So it is going to be height divided by num. All right, and so we need to use a for loop to create these 10 blocks. So when i less than num, i plus plus, and then we want to create blocks objects here, right? At a particular x and y location and with a particular frequency. So how about we start with y? So where do we want the y? It's going to be based on the size and which block it is, right? So I times size. And then for frequency, actually, I'm going to set the frequency at one for all of them for now. So it's going to be F and Y. And then now we're going to copy this and we're going to call these update and display method, right? So blocks of I dot update and blocks of I dot display so what's gonna happen all right so we have a bunch of blocks right but only one rectangle only one rectangle so let's fix that one first so the first thing is we don't want to draw this rectangle at zero comma zero right we want to draw it at zero comma this dot y right all right, and then why is everything kind of below here? It is because of this translate function here, right? We want to move it to the middle. We want the middle point here to be the origin for the x coordinate. But for y, actually, we just want to keep it at 0. All right, so the next thing that we need to fix is because now we use the rec mode of radius, right, where the x and y coordinate is the middle point of the rectangle. So we need to actually add size divided by 2 to this y coordinate here. So we move everything down by this amount. All right. And now that we have the margin for the x axis, why don't we do it for the y as well? So instead of doing just height divided by num, what we want to do is we want to do height minus same thing, 2 times the margin, and then divided by num. Oh, and then what do we need to do? We need to also add the margin here, right? So we want to actually move it down by margin and then by size divided by 2. Perfect. And now you can change the variable num here based on the number of blocks that you want. But now all the blocks, all the boxes are moving at the same pace because we set f to be equals to 1. But I actually want it to move at a different pace. So what we can do is why don't we just do it based on i here. But we want to do i plus 1 because we want the first one to actually move at 1, right? So let's try that. That looks pretty good, but it's moving kind of fast. And what we can do is how about we actually multiply it by a certain multiple. So let's call it f mount, and I'm going to set f mount to 
how about 0 0.3 so I have it move a little bit slower all right so a few things that I want to change in terms of the aesthetics so let's go to block.js first I actually want to write another method called collision Whenever each of the smaller square hits the right side of the rectangle, I want this collision method to return true. So let's write a conditional statement that says if this.x is greater than amplitude or equals to amplitude, how about that? Return true, then else return false. Then how about we set color let's call it this dot c let's start it at white and then we're going to fill this with actually we're going to fill the rectangle with actually we're not going to fill the rectangle let's do no fill but then for the squares we're going to use the function fill and we're going to fill it with this dot c and then in update i want to call this collision method and we can call a method inside a class by using the word this dot but I want to actually write a conditional statement that says if this dot collision if this returns true then I want to set this dot C to be black actually and then else this dot C will be white and let's try it So you did see that it started out as black, right? Because when angle equals to zero, actually this statement is true. But if you were to run it again, when it hits there, it doesn't turn black. We can actually print out this.x just to see. So Let's see. So it starts out at 180. So at 180, it is equal to the amplitude, right? Then it's down, down, down here. There are a bunch of them because there are a bunch of blocks. So if we go back here, it never really hit 180, right? It's at 179.7. So to give it a little bit of the buffer, what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna say if this dot x plus size divided by two, so this is the buffer. So if the right side of the square hits the amplitude or is more than the amplitude, then let's turn it black. And then this way, it gives it a little bit more leeway. And now it turns black when it hits the right side of the squares, I mean the rectangle, great. Now instead of just having this black and white colors, I actually want to make it a rainbow. First, I'm going to set the new color mode from the default RGB to HSB. HSB stands for Hue, Saturations, and Brightness. Hue, which is the first argument, is where we're going to be changing the values to get a different hue or a different color to make a rainbow color. Saturation is the intensity of the color, while brightness is as the name suggests, how bright the color will be. So what we're going to do now is actually, let's go back to block.js. I'm going to create another variable. Let's call it, actually, I'm going to create three. So hue, saturation, and I'm going to set saturation and brightness at 255, but the hue part is going to be a new parameter H. And then now inside here, I'm going to divide 255 evenly by the number of blocks, and then I'm going to multiply it by I, and I'm going to provide this as the third argument. And now, we are not using this dot C anymore, right? So instead of first, instead of this dot C here, it's going to be this dot H, this dot HSB, so S, and then this dot B, right? And then when it collides, I want the brightness to be at 255, but when it's not, I want the brightness to be 
a little bit dimmer how about at 50 for saturation i want it to be at zero when collides and at 255 when not and that is because if i give the saturation at zero and brightness at 255 it is going to be a white color let's try it all right so when it hits it is the color white all right and then now what i want to do next is first i for the rectangle i want it to be i want to change the color of the stroke to be also the color of the hsb here but i actually want the brightness to no saturation to stay at 235 all the time and then for this one is for the rectangle right for the square i want to give it no stroke and i actually want the brightness to stay at 255 for this one let's try it okay how about we give the background a little bit darker color so right now it is 220 i want it to be this blue color here all right you can see right when the boxes hit the right side here the rectangle actually turns brighter but as you can see here because they're right next to each other the bottom part is not actually bright what i want to do is i actually want to give it a little bit of a margin so for this y coordinate here for both the box and the square i want to subtract it by a certain amount I'm gonna hard code it at two here. Um, actually, why don't we call it margin, set it to two, and minus margin, minus margin. Let's try it. All right. And I want the square to be a square, so we need to also subtract it by margin. Okay. That looks good. Before we move on, how about we actually change it to 40? And yeah, that's a little bit more exciting, but I think it can move a little bit slower. How about we change this to 0.2? All right, and you can change, play around with this later on too. Before I integrate the sound part onto the sketch, let's look at how we're gonna approach it. There are a few ways that we can do this. The first way is to load mp3 files onto the sketch and then we can play or stop those files but that's not how we're going to do it in this tutorial what we're going to do is that we're going to be using a built-in class called p5 oscillator which is part of the p5 sound library we're not going to go too deep into the details of how this class works in this video but there are two key terms that i want you to be familiar with the first one is frequency and then the second one is amplitude Frequency is how high or how low the sound is or the pitch of the sound, while amplitude is the volume. And each note that we play has its own frequency. For example, the note A has a frequency of 440 hertz. To create the robotic-like sound that you heard at the beginning, what we're going to do is that we're going to be playing a bunch of notes based on the number of blocks that we have. Right? And each note comes with its own frequency. But if you look at this page here, the frequency is kind of hard to figure out. But what we can do is that we can use this thing called a MIDI note. And a MIDI note is a number that is assigned to a specific note. For example, with the middle C, that note is 60, right? And it has a frequency of 261.625. And if I click run here, this is the sound of what a middle C sounds like. But if I were to look at this number here, 72, which is C in the middle of treble clef, and it has a different frequency at 523.25. It is actually just one octave above of this middle C. Let's click run. So as you can see here, the higher the frequency, the higher the pitch, right? And it has also a higher MIDI note. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use this built-in method called MIDI to Freak to actually convert from the MIDI note here 
to a specific frequency to that particular note. Let's look at how the P5 oscillator class works. So I'm going to define a variable called OSC. And then inside setup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new oscillator object. And we basically just use the word new and then p5.oscillator. We need to make sure that we put p5 because it's part of the p5 sound library. And that's how we create a new OSC object. All right. And then next, we want to use the method called start to start this oscillator. Next, we're going to actually set the frequency. Let's say that we set a frequency at 440. And then I click run. And you hear that it is a note A, right? And if I were to play something higher, let's do 500. It is a higher pitch, right? But now I want to actually, how about play that middle C note? And it has a MIDI note of 60, right? And what I said before is that we can use a function called MIDI to freak. And then we just provide this number here. So let's do MIDI here. Let's click run. Then now we have this C note. And if I were to do 72, we just get it an octave above, right? And then now, so we play around the frequency. Let's play around with the amplitude. So we can use the function AMP and the amplitude ranges between zero and one. So if I put in zero, you don't hear anything, but if I put in one, now you hear what you just heard, right? So what I'm going to do in draw here is that I'm going to actually use the built-in variable called mouse is pressed. And I want to play this OSC. Let's start it at zero. I want to play it when I click my mouse, right? Let's set the amplitude to one. And then if not, then let's set the amplitude back to zero. You hear it? You don't hear it. You hear it? You don't hear it. But you also hear that clicking sound, right? And that is because we, when we click the mouse, we get the amplitude or the volume at full blast at one right away. And same thing when we release the mouse, then it just goes back to zero. It is too abrupt. And what we can do to get rid of that sound at the beginning and at the end is provide the second argument. And this allows us to ramp up and ramp down the volume. So how about we put it at 0 0.5. You can hear the delay a little bit. Maybe that is a little bit too much for you. So we can change the sound here to your liking. All right, so this is how we're going to integrate it into our sketch. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new parameter here called note. This is where we're going to put in the MIDI note. And then we're going to create a variable called OSC, and it's going to be a new p5.oscillator object, right? And then we need to make sure that we start it. And also, we want to set the frequency. No, this dot OSC dot frequency at what? At a certain MIDI note frequency, right? And then we just probably in this dot note in here. And then at the beginning, we're going to just set the amplitude to zero. But we want to set the amplitude to one when, when it collides, right? And make sure that you put in some sort of a ramp up, ramp down argument here. And then when it doesn't collide anymore, then we're going to set it at zero. Actually, I'm going to try and put it at five, 0 0.5 here. And all right, let's go back to sketch.js. Now we need to provide this note here, right? So what do we want to put in here? How about we start it at a little bit of a lower pitch. Let's do 50 plus I. So it's going to be all of the notes on the piano key, starting at a MIDI note of 50. All right, let's try it. 
And you can also change this number to be higher and that might hurt your ears a little bit more. <laughs> you can play around with the frequency here, right? And also the number of blocks, how fast you want things to move, and so many other different things. This is a fun one that integrates a lot of different ideas, including oscillation and sound. So I hope that you'll give this one a try. <laughs> Thank you. 